Hi everyone, today I tested out the Nikon D4 and the Nikon D800. So here's the results. Okay, so today Calumet, uh, which is a photography store, in Britain and Europe, and I think they've got a store in America now, um, had an open day for everyone to come along and look at their stuff. Which is a bit odd, a shop having an open day, they always have an open day. But what was special about this is that a lot of the uh, product companies were there showing off their stuff. And the good thing was Nikon and Canon were there as well. So I got to have a play with the Nikon D4, the Nikon D800, and the Canon, uh, something something Mark X, uh, their big one, they're, they're like competitor to the D4. And I'll have a little word about that at the end of the video. But uh, I just want to show you, it was just some simple, I just picked up the camera, started snapping away. I can only show you the JPEGs because my Lightroom doesn't have the raw converter for the uh, for the new cameras which are just out. That usually takes a couple of weeks uh, or maybe a month or so after the camera has been released for Adobe Lightroom to be able to have the kind of firmware to be able to read the raw. It's really annoying how it's different for every single camera and always needs to be updated. I don't know why, it just is. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, looking at the JPEG, this was a JPEG at, <laughs> wait a minute, wait, I'm just looking at the, geez, saying that this is at 6,400 ISO. Let's just get rid of anything from uh, above and below. And looking at that picture, I'd go maybe ISO 400. Uh, let's zoom in. So this is at one to one. And yeah, you can see a little bit of noise, but Whew, that's that's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. Let's see. Uh, let's keep with the details here. Let's go to the develop mode module. Um, okay, so in the JPEG, obviously, you don't really change anything around the details. It was at f five point six, one hundred twenty five, one hundred twenty fifth of a second, and this was at ISO six thousand four hundred in the D four. That is very very nice. Uh, in the black, usually you can see a bit more noise. Let's see, in the, G, in the JPEG, is there any noise that we can actually remove? Yes, we can. Obviously, doing the luminous reduction, uh, you, you lose some of the sharpness. What about colour reduction? Yeah, so you can definitely add that. Um, if you look really carefully, see in the bag here, it's kind of a little bit green, a little bit red, lots of kind of different colours going on on the black. Uh, if we just get rid of that, now it looks much more just black and white and black and grey. So that's uh, pretty good, so 6,400 ISO, wow. Okay, next one. What's this one at? This one, again, same, 6,400 ISO. This one, same, 6,000, ah, okay, this one, it just changes the shutter speed. So, F13, 12,000 ISO. Now, on my screen, I'm looking at this at a 27-inch Mac screen, and that's looking Okay, I, I can tell there definitely is noise there. Uh, 12,000, would I want to use that? I think I'd be quite happy using that. Let's say we zoom in one to one. You can see there's definitely kind of some degrading around that, how it becomes all jaggedy. Um, but that is in a dark, and that is F13, 200th of a second. You can see, kind of look how there's lots of colour going on in here. Let's see, just get rid of the colour noise. Let's do a little bit of luminance. Let's see how well that looks. Yeah, looks good. It looks, uh, yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, what am I saying? It's not not bad. It's absolutely amazingly fantastic. Uh, so yeah, that is that. And that's 16 megapixels. Let's see what's the next one. So another one at 12,000. Uh, this guy's green jumper certainly looks noisy and a bit gooey there. I'd imagine the raw would have more noise because I imagine there is a, a compression added to the uh, JPEG so you actually lose the noise. Now, this one, I think this one could be a higher ISO. Yes, yeah, so this one, it doesn't even tell us, but I think this was H1, which would be, wait a minute, we've gone to 250th of a second compared to 60th of a second. Ooh, that's still at F3, 13 even. So I th think, and then we went even higher. 
Let's see, how much is this destroyed? That's looking pretty good. It doesn't tell me the ISO. God damn it, it's so high. It's just an H1 setting, uh, but I can't actually see what ISO setting this was at, but I think this is well above 12,000. There, there. Ah, whoa, no, this was H4. I know that, and look at that. So this is 200,000 ISO. Are you gonna use that? Not a chance. That would probably maybe pass for a really crap newspaper. Um, but other than that, it's like the, even the colour's just been destroyed. Let's see if we can just get a kind of neutral colour. There, that looks a bit better. Let's bring the blacks up a little bit. So it's certainly, it's recoverable. You can certainly do something. And if we zoom in, oh, look at, look at that. That is nasty. But anyway, 200,000 ISO, no. It look, you could say it looks like a Holger <laughs> uh, kind of shot. So yeah, not there, but definitely that one. This is close up, showing the details even at the high ISO. So this one must be about 25 or 50,000 ISO. And I can read everything there. Knowing your way around Photoshop could take a lifetime, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, that is, that's very impressive. Normally it's just totally destroyed. And here's another shot at uh, ISO 200,000. Uh, would you ever, would you, does, have any of you ever shot at 200,000 ISO just for a reason other than just to see what it looks like? I don't know, I really don't know why the camera companies are putting this in. Because it, cause what it is, it's artificial noise. It's effectively, it's still ISO, uh, ISO 12,000 ISO, but what they're doing is artificially adding extra exposure. A bit just like going into Lightroom and adding exposure there. Um, it's, it's a bit of an auto, I don't know why they're really doing that. Okay, this one. Is the Nikon D800. Now unfortunately they gave it a fairly guff lens. It was a 24 to 120 millimeter lens which really isn't like a pro L series lens. L series of Canon but with Nikon I would really wanted one of their top end prime lenses. I suspect that it may have something to do with it. You put a lower grade lens on that you'll get less Mori effect going on. Mori being the colour and the weird stuff going on. Anyway, this was the 800, not the 800E for even more sharpness, but I this is the first time. I'm gonna zoom in one to one. Let's see how this looks. Wow. Really? Is that it? Yeah, just check. Pixel size is definitely what it what I thought it was. It's like 7,000 by over here, it tells me it's at 7,300 by 5,000, so yeah, that's a good lots of pixels. Um, when I zoom, I thought it'd be more. Really? Really? Is that it? Zooming in onto his ear. Huh, oh, okay. I I thought it would be more than that, actually. 35 megapixels. Um, oh. That hasn't as blown me away as much as I was expecting. I was expecting to go like, whoa, oh my god, we... I thought it'd be something like seeing that. I thought that's what we would see. But no, we're actually seeing that. And oh, look at the chromatic aberration, because they're giving us a crap lens. Thanks for that. Put a decent lens on for us to really see it. And that's it. Okay, that's ISO 900. Uh, noise wise, let's have a little look. It looks nice and clean. Nice and clean at ISO 900. Uh, and then that's a video. And here. So this is 3200. Now, let's see. There, that looks good. It's a well lit environment. Let's see, we have a close up. Not too bad. Again, this is just a JPEG shot, so there will be noise compression added to it. Um, but uh, yeah, seems okay. It's, 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 yeah, 6400 ISO. Very good. Again, this is the, the, the JPEG, so I really want to see how the RAW comes out. Maybe we'll see that in the future. But actually, I'd say that's pretty okay. I'd say that's, there's no not too bad in that at all. 
Uh, and let's see anything else. Nope, and that's that's it. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look at the video now. Okay, so this first video I'm shooting with the Nikon D4 and it's in auto ISO and I put it into aperture priority. So it should all roughly stay, stay, stay the same exposure. Here at the start I was at f2 and I'm with the Nikon 24mm lens and I, I've changed the aperture down to about f9 there. And you notice it's still a very shallow depth field when you go nice and close. The focusing speed, I'm pressing the auto focus button on the back of the camera. Um, however, what there is, is, there's a nice little green square which turns red when it's out of focus, then turns green in the live view uh, mode so you can see when it's focused. It seemed to sometimes do it automatically and do it by itself, and then at other times it seemed that I needed to press the auto focus button. So I don't know. I, I'm sure there's lots of stuff in the menu settings that would explain that a bit more, but it seemed to kind of sometimes do it, sometimes not. Couldn't quite figure itself out there. What I've done, I've also uploaded this in its full HD settings on uh, a previous video, so if you want to have a look at that, just check the link down below. Um, but yeah, focus wise, in this video, I cannot see any noise issues whatsoever. Maybe on the black Epson sign there, you can see a little bit. I think this is at fairly high ISO because I'm around about F13 going on here. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it was it, it was fantastic. And as we just said, it's at 12,800 ISO. Let's see the next one. Oh yeah, checked a little bit of rolling shutter going on there. And also, this was it kind of doing its own kind of exposure changing, it was very fast at that, I thought that was, that was pretty good. That, and that was one of the things with the earlier cameras with the digital SLRs is when you go from bright to dark, it's exposure changing wasn't so quick, especially with the auto ISO, it's a little bit slower. Um, here I'm just checking the focus of like inside, going to outside, seeing these people, hello, I couldn't quite get it to like stay focused on him. I thought it would like face recognize and it would focus on them, but it, it didn't quite do that as well as I was hoping it would. Um, and then that's me coming back and they're like, thank God you've come away from the door with our £5,000 camera. Um, but yeah, so Nikon D4 for video, very nice, very nice. Now, oh, oh, not so good. Okay, uh, right, show you here. Now, this is with the Nikon D800, which has been totally pimped out for its video. And uh, so just checking around, again, this is with a fairly duff lens, it's like the 24 to 120 lens, um, and gives very nice footage here, I thought that looks good. Again, what I'll do is I'll upload this uh, in, it's just kind of its raw format so you can see it in its full HD here. Um, and I was trying to see, because one of the things that they say, oh, it's so good because it's got rid of the moray patterns or the spatial aliasing, which is when you have a very uh, regular pattern, it gets kind of fuzzy or weird. There, there, I can see it on my computer. It depends on the resolution you're having. But this weird kind of color starts coming up. Let's see if I can show you that. Look at that. There's this blue, then orange, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange. And that's why people that are on TV programs are told never wear kind of silk shirts or anything like that because it's a nightmare or something with a pattern. And that is mori or spatial aliasing is another word for it. It's when it is making up a completely different pattern for something which isn't actually there. And that's because it's having to compress a, a huge file into a smaller file. And you're, yeah, I'm seeing it in all the, the shots there. So that definitely hasn't got been destroyed. That is still there. Okay, so yeah, here, here's another shot, it's just kind of getting a little bit closer, I could definitely see where the Mori, I think it's also different on each screen resolution that you have it at, a uh, bit of an odd one. Then also wanted to see if it had any kind of rolling shutter action going on as well. Uh, so that again with the Nikon D800, its exposure control was very, very good, no problems there at all. This was shooting at 30 frames a second, um, so not quite right with the, the internal lights. Checking for rolling shutter, it's still there. Not as bad as what I've seen in the past. So, um, in conclusion from what I did there is the D4, fantastic camera, ISO stuff is amazing, I had no problems there. The D800, again, very good as well, probably nothing really to compare about. 
the zoom effect that you get of a 35 megapixel wasn't as impressive as I thought it was going to be. Again, I would say you probably ought to have some awesome lenses to really see the best of that. In terms of uh, Mori that you're getting, you're getting that with both cameras, it's still there, it's pretty obvious. And I imagine with the D800e, it's going to be even more prominent in video. However, what I would say though, is the D4 feels so good. I had a little feel of the D3X, and I was like, yeah, it just feels like a big camera, but the D4, ooh. There's something about its shape, its position, its weight, its feel. Oh, it just felt so nice. It felt, it felt nicer than the D700 with the battery pack or the D300 with the battery pack. It, it just feels like a solid little kind of baby. Um, hmm. So what I would say, Nikon, is you've done a great job in making a camera feel great. The D800, loads of buttons on it. For some reason, the zoom, the, the kind of whenever you, in the menu settings, you zoom in and out, they were the upside down way. I didn't quite get that. And just seemed a lot of buttons on that. However, it was probably fine. Um, the, what I would also say is that the Canon 1DX, 1D Mark X, or D Series Mark X, I had a little play of that. They didn't let me take any videos of it because it's still their pre-production model. And they're like, no, you can't take any videos. I'm like, thanks guys, okay, chill out. Um, and they, the, that camera body felt big, clunky, and a bit naff compared to the Nikon D4. So, again, one of the things that you're always kind of spending on with the more professional cameras is the body, is its shape, is its ergonomics, is its materials that it's made out of. And I would say that the D4, in comfort-wise, in uh, size-wise and weight-wise, in holding bits and in, in position of buttons, far exceeds the Canon 1D Mark X. Additionally, using the 1D Mark X, I couldn't see a progression from like the Canon 5D Mark II to that. Like the buttons were just nowhere, I could not figure it out. The D4, again, there was a big jump up from the D700 because like the the main button is ISO, the white balance and stuff are at the, on the back, on the bottom screen, underneath the screen, which is a bit of an odd place to have it. Um, if you've had a D3 or D3S or a D3X, then it's absolutely fine. But for me, it's like, wh wh which buttons do I press? Where is it? Why is it not up there? So there's definitely another learning curve to do if you upgrade to one of these uh, like uh, full frame big ass cameras. But the Canon one I found a lot more confusing, just not very intuitive in any way. If I were going to be off to shooting the Olympics, I would definitely be going with the Nikon D4. And if I was having to use the Canon, I'd want the Canon for at least a week, maybe two weeks of me intensively figuring out all its menu settings, all its, you know, everything, and just how to, like, get to use that fluidly. That's what I don't think Canon has got. I don't think, for me, if I bought the big 1DX, 1D Mark X, I don't think it'd be as fluid a camera to use as the Nikon's, and I and that is still the same with the uh, Canon 5D Mark II. I've been using that for a good while now, and I use it every single day. However, if I'm going on a shoot where I need to be able to do all the things that I want to do nice and quickly, it's Nikon every single time. I think Canon just really needs to work on its ergonomics. But yeah, uh, there you go. Um, Little insight for you there. Hope that helps. Cheers. Bye bye.